you've laid out all the times he's spoken about it, but this lectern is available to him today. Uh, we have not heard him talk about it. He has the biggest megaphone. Aside in the from world. the Tulsa speech just a few weeks ago? No, I'm, I'm talking about when the vote is happening, mm -hmm. using the president's time. Mm -hmm. And so clearly the president is choosing not to do that now. Why? Where is the president on this issue on a day when they're voting? I would say first that the president has spoke spoken passionately about his commitment to expanding access to voting rights a number of times, and you will hear him speak about this again. Good evening, Black America and all allies fighting for Black liberation, Black prosperity, and Black joy. I'm Charles Blow, and welcome to Prime. The White House is pushing back at the progressives and liberals lashed out at the at President Biden for not doing enough to forcefully advocate for the voting rights bill ahead of the critical Senate procedural vote today. That failed as expected. The president released this statement after the failed vote that read in part, unfortunately, a democratic stand to protect our democracy met a solid Republican wall of opposition. Senate Republicans opposed even a debate, even considering legislation to protect the right to vote in our democracy. I'll have more to say on this next week, but let me be clear. This fight is far from over, far from over. I've been engaged in this work my whole career, and we are going to be ramping up our efforts to overcome it, to overcome again for the people, for our very democracy. Those on the left are fuming and demanding to know why Biden wasn't already ramping up efforts and why he didn't use his bully pulpit to do more to move the needle on the bill. The co-founder of the progressive group Indivisible, Ezra Levine, tweeted this yesterday. Is saving democracy a priority to this administration or not? Right-wing zealots are systematically dismantling our dem democratic institutions. I don't want to see some tepid public statement. We need to see the president and vice president using the full force of their bully pulpit to lead. This is what legislatively successful presidents do. Obama did a live debate with House GOP on the ACA. Clinton gave 18 speeches on NAFTA and deputized Gore to debate Ross Perot on it. Trump and George W. Bush were all tax cuts all the time. Where is Biden on saving our democracy? And joining me now is the author of those tweets, the co-founder of Indivisible, Ezra Levine. Mr. Levine, thank you for joining me tonight. Charles, thanks for having me. So after the, the, the bill failed in that procedural vote today, Schumer said he spoke to the president and vice president and thanked them for their, quote, unshakable support and effort. What do you make of that? Look, I believe the president supports this bill. I think he said repeatedly over the course, not just the last several weeks, but the last several months, even the last couple of years, that he is supportive of the For the People Act. The question is, when is he going to show up to this fight? When is he going to show up to this fight? What we have seen is the House Speaker has prioritized this, pushed this through the House of Representatives. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has said failure is not an option. Those are his words. He prioritized it. They called it H.R. 1, the first bill introduced in the House, S. 1, the first bill introduced in the Senate. And this is happening at a time of unprecedented attacks on our democracy, at least in the last several decades, going back to the civil rights era when they were fighting for the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 65. We're seeing voting, voter suppression in GOP-led states across the country. That threat is mounting every day. You look at any GOP-led state, whether it's Texas or Florida or Arizona or New Hampshire, where there's a GOP trifecta, they're passing voter suppression laws specifically to deprive mostly brown and black people of the right to vote. That is their goal. Now, what are we gonna do about it? We've got something called the For the People Act, which the president supports. So where is he? Where are his 18 speeches in support of the For the People Act? Where is uh, his effort to actually raise the public consciousness about this? The game isn't over yet, but we need him in it to win. The, the vote today wasn't a vote on the bill. It was a vote on whether to vote on the bill. It was a debate about whether to debate the bill. The Republicans don't wanna debate this. Of course they don't. But that vote failed because Mitch McConnell wanted to cut off debate. Now the question is, what do they do next? And this is the key so question. They're gonna, yeah, go ahead, Charles. So I, you know, I just want to play you something else that Schumer said today and get your response to that on the other side. Democrats will never let this voter suppression be swept under the rug. We have several serious options 
for how to reconsider this issue and advance legislation to combat voter suppression. We are going to explore every last one of our options. So yeah, what exactly so could those serious options be uh, other than eliminating the, fil the filibuster, which Manson and Cinema and people like that don't want to do? Well, so you're absolutely right. The only way to get this federal legislation through is some kind of change to the filibuster. And we know that because Mitch McConnell tells us the only way to get anything done on democracy is to change the filibuster. He has unified the Re Republican caucus against not just the uh, not just the For the People Act, but also the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. He said, nope, we're not going to do that. So you're not going to get two Republican votes, let alone 10 Republican votes for anything we're talking about. So you are exactly right. The only way to move this legislation to the president's desk is a change of the filibuster. But I would push back on this idea that the votes just aren't there or that Joe Manchin isn't going to do it or Kirsten Sinema isn't going to do it or, or any of the other senators. Where we are now is in a negotiation. And what do politicians do in a negotiation? The same thing any of us do when we're in the negotiation. You stake out ground. You say, this is, this is what I support. Not going to support anything else. Okay, later in the negotiation, maybe I'll figure out something I support. And that's not just me saying this. Yes, we've seen op-eds from Manchin or Sinema or others, but we've also seen leaked recordings. Manchin gave a speech to No Labels, one of these uh, right-wing supported groups. They purport to be centrist, but he gave a speech to them, and he was saying, oh, I'm, I'm really actually open to some options on filibuster reform. That's not something he's been saying publicly, but it is something he's saying privately. So uh, we, are, we are at the early stages of this fight. We have United Democratic Caucus behind the For the People Act. That was the vote today. Now, McConnell succeeded in cutting off debate, but that's not game over. They're going to go into recess over the 4th of July holiday. Then they're going to come back, and they'll have three weeks, three weeks in July, to determine what they do on voting rights. That's the option in front of them. And so, what they do in July is going to be determined by what they hear over the course of the July 4th recess. So then what do you think is what do you think is going to happen there? I mean, are you do you think that Biden is going to come forth and be more vocal about his support of this and and really sketching out for the American people how dangerous what is happening now in these states is to our democracy, which is something that, you know, no matter what they say from the White House, he just hasn't done it. I'm sorry. He has not done that. Uh, so do you think that's going to happen or do you think that they're going to come back after the recess and they're going to uh, uh, push forward some trim down versions of these voting rights bills. So I he, here's what I, I hope will happen. I think we need to see overwhelming pressure from the grassroots and we need to see clear, consistent leadership from the top. That is Nancy Pelosi, that is Chuck Schumer, and that is Joe Biden. So I hope that they come to the table ready to fight this fight. That's what they're saying now. That is what they're saying now. So I hope we see that. But I'm not just going to rely on hope. We can't just count on them to do it. What we know is that politicians respond to the broader political environment. They have a, a system for figuring out what to do, which is they stick their finger in the air and they figure out which way the wind is blowing. So we've got to change the direction the wind is blowing. That's the opportunity in front of all of us, everybody watching this now. The next couple of weeks are vital. If you haven't called your senator, you need to call your senator. If you haven't figured out where your senator is going to be over the course of this July 4th recess, by all means, figure it out. Show up. Ask them what they're doing to get the voting bill through, to get money out of politics, get ethics injected into our politics. That's the task in front of them, and we got to put their feet to the fire. Because if we don't, they're just going to do the easy thing, and the easy thing is nothing. So Politico is reporting that a top advisor to the Democratic to a Democratic mega donor is privately blasting the party's prioritization of the voting rights bill. Do you believe that, you know, the, the big money oligarchs behind the scene don't want this fight from the Democrats? They want them to push ahead with other things that are more palatable. And that may be why people are dragging their feet. Do I believe that, Charles? Who doesn't believe that? Who yes. on earth does not believe that? <laughs> My God. We're talking about the billionaires here. We're talking about the people who are trying to move the chess pieces on the board. They're, we're talking to the people who fund the, the the Democrats and the Republicans and everybody else. Of course they don't want the For the People Act. The For the People Act forces them to disclose who they're giving money to. The For the People Act balances out their overwhelming contributions by helping small dollar contributions so that people who don't have big pocketed donors like them can actually stand a chance of winning elections. The For the People Act is about making it harder to buy elections and easier to vote. 
is it any surprise that billionaires of all stripes are are, uh, are are fighting this tooth and nail? And to be clear, it's not just those billionaires. It's everybody. The Koch brothers are operating against this. We see this story that the tech billionaires are against it. Of course, that's what this fight is about. And that's why it's so important that we not just let them win. Because if we do nothing, of course they're going to win. We've got to show up. And the one thing that scares a politician more than their donor picking up the phone and yelling at them is a thousand of their constituents showing up at a town hall and yelling at them and saying, you better do this because I'm going to hold you accountable. That's our power. And that's the opportunity that we have over the course of the next few weeks. So Manchin proposed some compromises. Republicans shot it down right away. Is there any version of this that you believe enough Republicans would be able to support? So we just got a word from Roy Blunt um, earlier today, who is seen as one of the quote unquote moderate senators on the, in the Republican caucus, who said he wouldn't even vote for a voter ID bill at the national level. That's not even a progressive priority. That's a conservative priority. Would not even vote for a voter ID bill because he believes states ought to have control of their elections. The Republican Party officially supports voter suppression at the state level, and they officially oppose any efforts at the federal level to address that. That's the reality, and you don't have to listen to me. Listen to the Republicans. Listen to what they say. Immediately after Joe Biden, or after uh, we saw Joe Manchin's watered down proposals in the For the People Act, what we got from Mitch McConnell was a statement, nope, everybody's gonna vote against that. All of my folks are gonna vote against that. That is what we are hearing from them. So we should take the Republicans mm -hmm. at their word. I don't think you get one Republican vote for any version of the For the People Act, let alone 10 Republican votes. It is a pipe dream that that is anywhere in the realm of possibility. Instead, I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to stall. They're going to delay. They're going to drag this out. And they're going to hope that Republicans don't find their spine, and that they're able then, the Republicans are able then, to continue gerrymandering and voter suppressing their way into majorities next year. That is their plan, and currently, I'm sorry to say, Charles, they're on the way to accomplish that. Ezra Levine, uh, that's, that's, we end on a downer, <laughs> but thank you for joining me we tonight. Hopefully it's not too much of a downer. My message is this could go either way. And that's what makes what we do right now so important. That's what makes it so important to act right now. All right. Thank Thanks you for joining me, sir.